off by again thanking not just Fausto and the team. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day when you could be trying to trade and make some money to try to learn something new that can help power the way you're trading to maybe better accuracy, better profits. And I'm going to share with you today three special chart settings that will power your trading accuracy. Because a lot of people, particularly beginners, they try what I call a one-size-fits-all approach. And what you're going to learn today, and I'm going to give you a promise, that you will come away with four secrets that will actually skyrocket your profits. Here's the first promise I want to make to you. You don't have to be guessing about where to get in and where to get out. Now, I'm not promising that today I'm going to share with you a true mechanical system. Yes, we do at TradeSafe offer a mechanical trading system, but you'll learn more about that maybe later if you want to check in with us. Today, I'm going to cover some basic groundwork that will get you started. No obligation, no investment on your part. Everything here is free. So I want you to come away knowing that a lot of the doubt about getting in, getting out, you can do away with that. The next promise, as Fausto said, cycles. Cycles can really reveal hidden trends that a lot of traders aren't aware of. And once you know where those hidden trends are, well, you're going to use special chart settings that will enable you to increase the accuracy of your trades from entry to exit. And that's what I'm going to actually give away to you today. And maybe as a bonus of sorts, I'm going to give you exit strategies to go along with those chart settings so that you'll know how strong the trends are. And instead of using a one-size-fits-all, oh, I always scalp, I always scale out, I always do this or that, you're going to know when it's appropriate to do one of those types of exit strategies. And yes, I am going to give you a real bonus. I know some of you have never day traded. Maybe you have and you said, oh, that's not for me. And as Fausto said, please keep an open mind. Because even if you've not thought about day trading or you weren't real sold on it before, what I'm going to share with you today can be repurposed for swing trading. And I'm going to give you an overview of how you can do that. So we're trying to make your time worthwhile. Well, he gave a really great intro, but I'm going to go ahead and expand a little bit on it. That's me, Michael Guess. I've been a professional day trader for over 25 years. Like he said, I was a SOS trader in the prop shops and all that stuff. But along the way, I eventually started TradeSafe about 19 years ago. And since then, I've graduated more than 3,000 students. I've created a variety of indicators and trading systems. And I did mention a minute or two earlier that we do have the TradeSafe mechanical trading system, which you'll probably want to know more about after today's presentation. But let's keep going. One thing that a lot of people may not know is that in a past life, I was a psychotherapist. And this helps me bring to the table when I coach my own students how to make sure that you maintain the rigor that's necessary so that you don't overtrade, you don't get frozen with analysis paralysis. Well, with all that being said, you're probably going to be asking questions and I might not see them right now, but I want you to know, guess what? You can get a full hour of my time. That's right, not a sales pitch, but you can talk directly to me, the developer. How? Well, at the very end, you'll be shown how you can actually opt in and be made available to get something very special and very free, of course. But in the process, you'll get a follow-up email. And in that email, you'll get a link to seeing my personal schedule. And that means you'll be able to book personal consultation with me. And like I said, nobody's going to twist your arm. That's just not my style. Now, before we get into the 
actual presentation today, I do need to say a couple of things. Uh, I'm not going to read all this boilerplate, but I will say this, whether it's the CFTC, the SEC, or any of the other governmental regulatory agencies, they all say the same thing. Please don't try to trade with money you can't afford to lose. Make sure that you have discretionary income, okay? And something else, the FTC, which has nothing to do with trading, they regulate the internet. They say you are not allowed, nobody is allowed to make a promise of results over the internet. So I'm not gonna promise things, but I am gonna show you how you can achieve higher levels of consistency. Because you know what, the real holy grail, it's consistency. All right, let's dive right in. What are the biggest problems, especially for beginning traders? Well, they tend to take a one-size-fits-all approach. They latch on to something they hear about or see, and they just work it to death, and then they don't get what they expected. Typically, they'll use just one chart or one indicator, etc. You need to use a much more comprehensive approach. Another problem, People don't realize that whatever you're doing doesn't necessarily work the same way across all markets. They have personalities, just like you and I do, right? Some markets are more aggressive. Some markets are more conservative, just like we traders are. So get to know the personalities of the markets that you trade. I'll expand on that a little bit later. One typical characteristic of markets is trending. Now, I know there's lots of different ways to trade. You can either take a trend following trade, you can do counter trend trading, which is kind of like stepping out in front of a moving train. You can range trade between the high and low of the day or whatever it is. You can do a whole variety of things, but I would say the consensus for well over a hundred years now has been that the safest and probably the most reliable way to generate profits is to follow the trend. So look for trending in your markets. Something else that people don't pay attention to is, is the market volatile? That means, is it real hyperactive or is it real sluggish? For you day traders out there, you know that right now this is summertime and we have something called the summer doldrums which typically means a lot of traders take vacations and the volume drops off and a few of the trading opportunities might diminish a little bit but you know what after labor day everything seems to kick in again is that always true no sometimes in the summer it's no different than any other time of the year you need to pay attention to what happens throughout the year what about the range of the market you trade? Is it a large range market? Does it trade from a really high point to a really low point and give you a lot of follow through on trades? Or is it a narrow range day? Does it tend to trade within not a whole lot of different points? And that means if you get into a trade, it doesn't typically go very far. And as I said before, don't use just one chart to trade. Use others. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I want you to look at that camcorder. It has a zoom lens, and you can use charts just like a zoom lens because they're fractal. That means you'll see the same kind of patterns repeat themselves over and over again, but as you drill down, as you zoom in, you can see more and more detail. And as you back up, like if you use the wide angle zoom lens on that camcorder, you can also do the same thing with a higher setting on your charts and see what's potentially going to happen for this part of the day or the whole day that you're day trading, okay? And then as you zoom in more and more until you finally get all the way to the lowest point where you have a smallest setting, you use that for low risk surgical entry, as I call it. That's your smallest setting. So you're going to use different setting charts to give you the equivalent of a zoom lens. And this is gonna give you a roadmap so that 
you can then proceed to determine the trend on each of those charts that has a different setting. Once you determine that trend, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's first put to bed uh, something that a lot of you have heard, and it's really unfortunate. People say, oh yeah, it's in an uptrend, higher highs and higher lows. You know what? That is a horrible way to determine trend because it's subjective. I could get a half a dozen different traders in a room and say, point to me on the chart. Where is the trend actually starting? And you know what? I'd get six different answers. What you really need is a proven method, some reliable indicator that will determine when you have a trend that's up or down. And especially if you can have an indicator that will let you know when you don't have a trend, when you have true congestion. In that trade safe mechanical trading system that I've referred to a couple of times earlier, we actually have that as the beating heart of our whole system is our proprietary trend indicator. But even if you decide not to go in that direction, I'm sure you'll find plenty of other trend indicators out there that can give you something more reliable than higher highs and higher lows. So even if you don't use a true mechanical trading system, you can still use a real indicator to determine trend and eliminate the guesswork about whether you have trending. And you need to determine that trend on each of the charts. This will then help you determine what is called the strength of the trend before you even take a trade. And when you know the strength of the trend, this will help you determine, hey, before I get into a trade, I want to know how do I want to manage and exit that trade. That's right. Instead of a one-size-fits-all way of getting out of your trade, oh, I always scalp, 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 scalp. No. Really, you would like a tailor-made approach to what the market is capable of giving you because that's going to change throughout the day. So I'm going to use an analogy here. Too many traders do not approach their trading the correct way. Professionals, they approach it like a chess game. They plan ahead, they think ahead, they are strategic. This allows you to anticipate things before you get your setup. It allows you to relax. It allows you to actually be a true part-time trader. And all of my students, with very few exceptions, are part-time traders. They'll trade a little bit in the morning or in the afternoon, but they will know when conditions warrant paying attention because they know when they have trends, how strong the trends are, and when they need to pay attention. Unlike a lot of beginners who treat their day trading like a video game, you know, where you white knuckle a mouse and you try to shoot anything that moves. No, don't do that. This is not about reflexes. This is about strategy. And once you take a strategic approach, part-time trading really becomes possible. How can we do it? Okay, now I'm going to start giving you the actual promises that I've been saying I deliver on. Ratios make it possible. See those three charts there? The first biggest chart on the left has the highest setting. If you were to zoom in on that chart and get more granular detail, the middle chart would show you what you would be seeing at a magnification, a smaller setting. And if you kept up that process, the smallest setting, the low risk surgical entry time frame, that's the one that gives you the real granular detail you would need. Well, this is all helpful, but you're saying, how? Show me, Michael. All right, I'm going to show you using an example for what are called the minis. These are the indexes or indices, the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the Russell. Those are in the United States. Now, once you learn this methodology, you can use this for other types of markets, okay? So even if you don't trade the minis, pay close attention. Here's how you do it. First of all, you want to determine the number of minutes in what is called the daytime trading session. 
Now the minis, as they're called, these are electronic futures contracts that trade around the clock and they have a brief break at one point during the day, but the majority of the volume occurs during the daytime part of the trading session. So when is that? Well, in Chicago, where they are traded, that starts in the central time zone at 8.30. If you're on the East Coast, it's 9.30. So wherever you live, just adjust for that. The afternoon close, or pit close as it's called, is at 3.15. So what you want to do is subtract from the open to the close and determine the number of minutes. Well, I'm going to save you the trouble and do it for you. And the number of minutes is 405. That's your master number that you begin with so that you'll determine what the rest of the chart settings are going to be. So what do you do with this master number? You want to take smaller and smaller numbers, integers, that divide into 405 without a remainder. So what's the biggest number that divides into 405 without a remainder? It's 135. Well, that's a chart setting way too big for uh, day trading, maybe even for swing trading. The next biggest number that divides into 405 is 81. And if you keep doing that and maintain a three to one ratio, what is one third of 81? It is 27. And that 27 divides into 81, it divides into 405. And guess what? For trading the minis, 27 minute chart is actually more accurate than a generic 30 minute chart setting. So for those of you who are used to using the drop down menu on your day trading platform and you just use the 60, the 30, the 15, the 10, three, five, or one, or whatever it is, they're generic and they're useless. What you really want is to be able to dial in the precise settings for the market you trade. And if you are saying, oh, Michael, uh, my platform won't let me do that. Uh-oh, well, guess what? We have a saying here in Austin, Texas, where I live. Don't take a knife into a gunfight. You are competing against professionals. So you do not want to use an amateur platform. Make sure that the platform you use will allow you to create the setting for the chart that you want. The platform that we use for our system is NinjaTrader. You might want to use something else for what you're learning here today, but as long as it lets you dial in those numbers, let's keep going with the three to one ratio. What is one third of 27? Nine. One third of that is three and one third of that is one. These are your three chart settings that you will want to use for day trading the minis. Your wide angle view of the market for at least half of the day and maybe all of the day is your nine minute setting. Anything above that is useless for day trading purposes. You zoom in 300%, a three minute time frame or setting is going to be your dominant trend or cycle. But you want that lowest risk possible for getting into a trade, right? So let's take one third of a three minute chart setting. That's your one minute chart. That is very granular. Even though by itself, statistically speaking, it's just noise, as I'll illustrate in a little bit, it is really useful to you when you have something called trend agreement. But you want a one minute chart setting because that gives you low risk surgical entry. So maintain a three to one ratio and use a nine, a three, and a one for trading the minis. Now what I've just taught you, you can try something similar for any other markets, whether it's indexes or indices on other countries like the German DAX, the French CAC, the UK FTSE, or maybe currencies like the futures version of the currencies, the euro would be the 6A, and so forth, and so on. All right, so now that you know your chart settings, what do you do with this? Well, let's use a symbolic representation and say, we've got our nine-minute chart in a strong uptrend. 
your three minute chart is in a slow meandering drifting downtrend and maybe your one minute chart has just started an explosive rally please notice that no two representations of chart direction or trend that are side by side are trending in the same direction optimally speaking you want this you would like all three of your charts to be trending in the same direction are you going to get that very frequently unfortunately no markets don't trend most of the time they tend to unfortunately congest or be in chop and when they do trend you're not going to necessarily get all of them trending together so here is something I'm going to share with you for free so that you will learn how to manage and exit your trades based on the strength of the trend. Here is something that my own students learned from us with our trade safe mechanical trading system in the course that accompanies it. It's a rhyming mnemonic, a teaching device that helps you remember it. And it goes like this. The minimum is the one and the three need to agree best as if all three agree. You want all three of those charts, those time frame settings to be trending together up or down the nine, the three and the one. When you do have that, you have the potential for a really strong price move. I'm not guaranteeing it. I'm just saying this is what the odds are, the probabilities, because isn't that what trading is about? Statistical probabilities. And if you have them all trending together, you have the likelihood so that when you really get into an actual trade, you'll probably get a lot more follow through. Well, you wouldn't want to throw away a trade on a scalp that only goes a little bit and it's all over and you made some money and you were happy that you got a winner. What you really wanted was to ride that thing as far as the trend would last. So what's an appropriate exit strategy for that? Well, you want one that keeps you in the trade as long as possible. My recommendation, scaling out. A simple scaling out exit strategy would be to trade sets of two, four, six, or eight. In other words, pairs of the units you're trading. So if you're trading the minis, you're trading contracts. You trade either two or four or what multiple of two there are. And you try to hit a fairly easy to reach profit target. Well, that leaves some guesswork in there, doesn't it? How about if I told you I'm going to show you how to reduce the guesswork and you would want to scale out if all three agreed at, say, $100 worth of profit. And that would pay for the trade. Now, in our mechanical system, this is all done for you. It's automated. Your stop is even moved to break even to hedge the trade before you even hit the target. But let's say you're just doing this on your own manually. You're scaling out at $100. You've got a paid for trade. You can sit back and relax. You know you have a winner. What do you do then? Trail a profit stop. Your stop should have, by the time you had scaled out, move it from where you could have had a loser, move it to break even. And maybe one take a profit to at least pay for those commissions. As price moves higher, you will want to adjust that trailing profit stop. It's not a protective stop loss anymore. It's a profit stop. Now, again, with our system, it's automated. You don't have to do it. But you can use whatever methodology you want to for trailing your stop. So that's if all three time frames are in agreement. Scale out. Get a paid for trade really quickly by taking half your position off the table and then trail a profit stop. Well, what if you don't have all three time frames trending together, which we already admitted you don't get most of the time? What if you only have two of the charts or time frames trending together? Well, that would be your entry time frame, the one you start the trade on, and the next higher time frame. So, based on what I had showed you 
earlier for the minis, that would be the one minute chart and the three minute chart. So if just those are trending together up or down, but the nine minute is maybe going in the other direction, or maybe it's not even trending, maybe it's congesting. Well, you still have the potential for a trade that can work, but it's probably going to be a weaker, briefer price move. You won't get a lot of follow through. So you don't want to stick your neck out. You would want to just get in and get out at a really easy to reach target. What's the appropriate exit strategy for those conditions? Scalping. So that is how you would want to approach this. You would want to be able to scalp when you have weak trending conditions, as I've just shown you, only the one and the three agree. And if all three agree, and that comes along a little less often, you would then use a scaling out exit strategy. Now I'm gonna to try to make an attempt here to see if there are questions before we go forward. And it's not working, so let me just keep going. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next slide here. What we've been talking about are tuned cycle spaced multiple time frames. That is the equivalent of your zoom lens, but using settings on your charts. Now, I certainly didn't come up with the concept. It's been around for a while, but what I have done is I have determined what the cycles would be for the minis and given you a formula that you can apply for other types of markets but it is based on an open and a close it's based on the daytime trading session so some of you may say oh i use forex what about forex michael well one of the difficulties with forex is there isn't a starting and stopping time it just keeps going it moves from the london market to the new york market and so on and so forth so what you need to do is create some synthetic chart settings, and that would be fake starting and stopping times. You do not want to use that one minute chart. Statistically, even for the minis, it was a little bit too noisy, and on Forex, it's way too small. You want to have your smallest setting be a three minute chart. So if we try that three to one ratio and just shift it higher, you're going to use a 27, a nine, and a three. But unlike what I taught you with the minis, where you can have a choice about whether to scalp or to scale if you have all or some of them trending together, you don't have that with Forex. You want to always and only do a scaling out exit strategy. Don't do a scalp. And you want to have all three of them trending together. Okay? That's what you really need. And then you would enter on a three minute pullback. My recommendation when you're a trend following trader, whether it's on Forex or minis or anything else, I recommend retracement strategy trading. That's as old as dirt, but Again, with our system that we also offer, it is very rigorous with precise tolerances and it is a true mechanical system. But let's come back to what we've been talking about. Your scale out point for your Forex is gonna depend on just how many of those are in agreement. I told you, you really want the 27, the nine and the three to agree. But if you're an impatient trader, and only the nine is in agreement with the three, well, you're going to want to try to scale out of half of your position a bit sooner than you would if you had the 27 also with the wind at your back. I use a baseball metaphor. If you have the wind at your back, you swing for the fences. All three of the time frames are in agreement. You want to scale out, right? If you don't have much wind at your back, you'd want to bunt and get on base. So if you were trading the minis, that would be a scalp, okay? 
Well, one of the things that I told you about at the very beginning was I was going to give you all those things I promised, those very special secret settings and so forth, and I have already shared those with you, but I also promised you a bonus. For those of you who say, mm, I'm not so sure I want to try any day trading, or I do, but I also swing trade, I'm going to show you how you can take what you've learned today and you can repurpose it. That's right. You can actually use it for position trading, but short term, that's what swing trading is, typically for a few days. Now, the example I'm going to use is again, based on what I've taught you before for the indexes or indices. You're gonna want that same three to one ratio we talked about, but not those same numbers. You want, just like I showed you with Forex, the 27, the nine, and the three. And when all three are trending together, you have to have them all trending together. This grand alignment occurs typically maybe two to three times a month. And when you have them all trending together, you're wanting to then wait for the very first pullback that you get and enter your trade on your three minute chart. And then what you want to do is scale out using sets of three, six or nine. In other words, one third of your position scales out at about a hundred dollar profit, okay? What do you do with the remaining two thirds of your position or the, if you were trading three contracts, what about the second and third contract? Well, your stop would then be moved to break even plus one tick of profit. Once you've hit that $100 target, you have a paid for trade. Even if it doesn't go any further, you've still made some decent money. And if you scratched, you still pick up enough to pay commissions and then some. But what you want to do with the middle third is wait until the close, assuming that you're trailing a stop using whatever methodology you want. If you're still in the trade on the middle third, you will want to exit that middle third of your position before the 315 central time afternoon close. Don't do MOC, market on close. Manually flatten that middle third. Well, that leaves the final third of your position. What do you do with that one? Well, it's still sitting there, that protective stop, technically a profit stop because it's factoring in one tick of profit. It's still sitting there at one tick of profit. You've got to convert that stop to a good till cancel, GTC, so that as you go to sleep, you've already had a paid for trade, probably made several hundred or even over a thousand dollars. And then you want to wake up the next morning. And if you're still in the rest of this final third of your position, here's what you do. After you've scaled out and paid for the trade already the previous day, and you've already you know, taken the second or middle third to the close, you're going to want to step your trailing stop up from a three minute chart to a nine minute chart. Use whatever method you were using on the three minute to trail a stop before. Now you're using it on the nine minute chart. This gives you way more breathing room so that you can try to stay in the trade, hopefully for multiple days. This would be a very simple approach to swing trading using this whole methodology. So let's review the core concepts. First of all, you want to get to know the market personality and find out which ones do tend to trend most of the time. You, know, you don't want those narrow range markets. You want them to have a decent range and that they do tend to trend. For example, the indexes do tend to trend. Currencies tend to trend. Crude oil, unfortunately, doesn't. It tends to be a congestive market that breaks out, but often fakes out. So if you were interested in the energy complex, I wouldn't recommend crude oil. I would instead recommend natural gas. So you could try NG, 6E for currencies, or any of the four indices. 
But above all, don't do that one size fits all type of single chart trading. You can't get all the information you need from a single chart. You need to use multiple charts, each one with a zoom lens type of chart setting, enabling you to have a wide angle, higher setting to see the big picture for the day and keep zooming in until you see what your smallest chart setting would be. And then you want to determine what the trend is on each of those charts and find out how many of them are trending together. The more of them that are trending together, the more wind you have at your back, that's going to determine in advance before you take the trade, you'll pre-select your exit strategy based on the strength of the trend. You're going to either scalp if you have weak trend, only the one in the three agree if you're trading the minis. And if all three agree, you will want to scale out. And of course, I did also give you a bonus that showed you how you can repurpose this from trading sets of two, four, six, or eight for day trading to sets of three, six, or nine, and turning a day trade into a swing trade. Now, if you would like to learn more about all of this, it's covered in our free ebook. And I would really love for you to have this ebook. It's going to be absolutely no obligation. No one will twist your arm. You'll get everything that's contained in today's presentation. And it'll even expand on what you've learned in today's presentation. Now, if Rich is listening in, I would love for him to post the link so that people can see that link. If he doesn't post it, it's a real simple one. You might want to just jot it down. It's daytradesafe.com. That's our website forward slash cyber expo. If you put that in your browser or click on that link, but I'd rather you stay here for at least a couple of more minutes, then you'll be able to be taken to a very special page all we're going to ask you is to just give us your first name and your email address. After that, you will be able to get your free copy of this ebook that covers what we've done here today and a lot more. Plus, you'll also be able to get to schedule time with me. So I want to say thank you. I'm not ready to leave yet, but I'm reminding you that you can schedule time with me. For those who might have come in late, at the beginning I mentioned that I do have a calendar and in the follow-up email for those who opt in and get their ebook, you'll also be able to schedule a full hour consultation with me. It will not be a sales pitch. I don't do that. I am going to just answer your questions truthfully and candidly. I want you to feel that your time was well spent, and then you can decide whether or not you're interested in anything else that we offer at TradeSafe. Maybe it's our TradeSafe mechanical system that is a true mechanical system and is a very automated system so that you don't have to wonder about doing all these things manually. So if you'd like to see how that system works, by the way, I've got a link at the bottom of this screenshot here. It says daytradesafe.com. Now, I don't have a link that I gave to Rich to post, but it's basically just daytradesafe.com forward slash trading workshop, and it's hyphenated, trading hyphen workshop. And it will give you a replay of an actual presentation that I have done in the past, and it'll walk you through all the features and the benefits so that you'll see the true power of what an actual mechanical Boolean logic trading system can do for you.